Today, fashion is many things for many people. From a form of expression, to an easy way of assimilating and fitting into society. This industry has supported many societal shifts and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. And as the global population grows, so does the desire for more clothes. In order to meet this demand, which it also had a hand in creating, the fashion industry has been forced to grow quickly, leading to many innovative creations that we benefit from today. While this has produced gains for many parties involved, the speed at which it has occurred has led to many issues across the supply chain, which are only now being addressed. From issues of waste, to overproduction, poor working conditions, and more. One other, which is also beginning to be addressed but not yet mainstream, is chemicals in clothing and their effects on the wearer. So, in this short documentary, we will go on a journey together looking at the chemicals which are used in the production of clothes and their effects on the human body. Let's begin. Humans have been around for a very long time. The origins of which can at least be traced to several million years ago. Although we're not exactly sure when, at some point in our existence, we began to cover ourselves with additional layers. Whether that be for social reasons, protection, or just because we could. Some argue it began in the Garden of Eden with ample sized leaves. Others claim hunter-gatherers made use of the hide from animals they had slain. Regardless of when and how it began, much has changed over time in our relationship with clothing, which has primarily been spurred on by human ingenuity through the invention of such items as sewing needles, which can be traced back 50,000 years, or to the dyeing of wild flax fibers almost 40,000 years ago, and various other examples. Now, Although the use of these items in clothing production at that time is speculative, it is still highly likely this was the case of use. Anyway, over the last 10,000 years, we've acquired many skills that have improved the quantity and quality of materials produced. From agriculture and the cultivation of flax, hemp and cotton plants, to the domestication and selective breeding of certain animals, from silkworms to sheep with woolly fleece, as well as cattle and pigs for leather, alongside much more. These innovations of course led to much prosperity and trade across Europe, Asia and Africa over the last few thousand years. Also, as time went on, we saw an improvement in the quality of the tools used to make clothes through the first and second industrial revolution, bringing us machinery which could harness water, steam and electric power to create a large quantity of clothes much faster than humans ever could. The unofficially titled Third Industrial Revolution, which occurred midway through the 1900s, brought us information technology and data analysis, then allowing for increased efficiency and production across continents, enabling brands to grow and become the multinational giants of fashion you see today. Of course we could go on, but we're not here for that today. So the question is, when did the chemicals get involved? So, you may be wondering, when we say chemicals, what do we mean? As we all know, pretty much every substance on this planet can be classified as a chemical. From water, to steam, gold, iron, and even sugar. But in this case, 
we are referring to industrially produced chemical substances made in a laboratory or through some kind of industrial process. At the time of making this documentary, it is estimated there are around 8,000 different chemicals used by the fashion industry for all kinds of reasons. As fashion and its methods of production were mechanized, it led to incredible growth, but also a lot more risk at every level, as any small mistake or mishap could mean massive losses. Thinking of clothes made from plant fibers such as cotton, this process starts out on a farm where you immediately have to protect against potential crop loss from various things, whether that may be bugs, disease, weeds, or even poor weather conditions. This has led to many innovations in agriculture, from weed killers to pesticides which protect against bugs and disease, and other chemicals which either facilitate plant growth or prevent them not growing. All different chemicals which were created at different times to help solve one problem or another when at the time it seemed there were no other options for how to protect the crop. From the farm, or wherever the materials are sourced from, we move to the textile factories. These are where raw materials of all kinds such as cotton, wool, flax and others are put through various processes and exposed to various highly toxic chemicals to be prepared for garment factories where they are cut and sewn into wearable items of clothing. Often, these are in the same place. Anyway, the processes will vary depending on the type of material and what the intended use will be. This can include anything from bleaching for stain removal and whitening purposes, exposure to formaldehyde to make an item wrinkle-free and non-shrinkable, PFCs or perfluorinated compounds can be used to create coatings which can enable water and stain resistance. Brominated flame retardants do as described and will prevent clothes burning or at least make them less flammable. And then you have heavy metals for dyeing, ammonia for shrink resistance and so many more chemicals which can and will be used on these fabrics to ideally protect them and yourself. But of course, that isn't always the case as we will find out later. For now, let's stay with materials. As it's not just that industrial chemicals are added to fabrics, in some cases they are solely made from them. Let's look at the fossil fuel petroleum. The sourcing and use of petroleum has made many aspects of our life easier from kerosene lamps to fuels to asphalt and even plastics, as well as the lesser known synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are fibers that have been produced by humans via chemical synthesis. The first appearance occurred in the late 1800s and soon after the first commercially viable version was produced in rayon. Although that wasn't truly synthetic as it was made from wood, it then took around 40 years for the first true synthetic to appear, which was nylon. Initially set for military use, it was eyed as an alternate parachute and rope material just in time for World War II. However, it gained popularity as women's stockings, and the rest is history. Since then, there have been many synthetic fibers introduced to the market, including polyester, acrylic, spandex and more. These materials dominate the fashion market as it is now estimated that 60% of all material that is used to make our clothes are made from synthetic fibers and pretty much all of them have a considerable amount of toxic chemicals in them. But these aren't simply things you can wash away from the garment or coat with a protective layer as they are what essentially makes them. So far, we've spoken much about chemicals and fashion, but little of their effects. I assume many of you are wondering if there is even an issue here. 
especially if we've been wearing these chemical-laden clothes for years and are seemingly fine. Is there really any effect we should be conscious of? Yes, yes you should. First, let's talk about the human body. The human body, like most things on this planet, is a lump of mass composed of a number of chemical elements combined in various ways and due to the way things have formed, these have led to cells which have reproduced and formed us muscles, bones, organs, blood, a nervous system and more, which are covered and partly protected by our skin, which is the largest organ we have. However, although it may seem so, none of these are static. The cells in our body are constantly changing, being born, producing new cells and then dying. During this process, driving countless processes in the body to occur, from pH regulation to food digestion, movement, breathing, and every other action our bodies produce. It is said that we essentially become new people every seven to 10 years, as every cell in our body would have been replaced by a completely new cell in that time. So you can imagine there are lots of different chemical reactions happening at any given time in the body. One of the more recent estimates places the number close to 37 thousand billion billion chemical reactions in the body per second just to clarify how big that number is that would be 21 zeros after the number 37 but these aren't isolated reactions the chemicals in our bodies and how they react can also be influenced by foreign substances such as drugs or food and depending on what you consume and how much of it, the effects will vary. However, this isn't limited simply to that which goes through your mouth. It is also everything in contact with your skin. As we touched on earlier, the skin is the largest organ on the body. It protects us and also allows for the absorption of vital minerals and nutrients like vitamin D from the sun. However, because of its porousness, the skin absorbs everything it comes into contact with and the rate increases the hotter your body is. So when you are wearing a synthetic garment directly on your skin and it's causing your body temperature to increase, it's also increasing the likelihood and the amount of microfibers released from your garment to be absorbed into your body. These are the same petroleum-based microfibers which are being released into water systems and the wider oceans through your washing machine and causing untold amounts of ecological damage. But the main focus here isn't the clogging of pipes. It is in fact the dangers we are exposed to by absorbing the chemical-ridden fibers into our bodies. So, even from the chemicals mentioned earlier used on farms and in textile factories, there are an assortment of risks that the farmers and factory workers are exposed to by purely being in proximity of these substances. There has been much evidence from herbicides and their carcinogenic potential, brominated flame retardants being bioaccumulative adding to your chemical body burden and being endocrine disruptors affecting your hormonal systems. Then you have chlorine bleach leading to asthma and other respiratory problems and also heavy metals causing DNA and reproductive issues alongside damaging your liver and kidneys and so much more. So you don't have to try too hard to imagine what types of problems can occur once you have these clothes on your body for a prolonged period of time. Either way, here are some examples. Contact dermatitis is a type of eczema or skin rash which affects the body. Causes can be from anything produced with industrial chemicals, from soaps to chlorinated waters. But the amount of cases has sharply increased with the advent of textiles laden with synthetic dyes. In particular, 
ones that include formaldehyde as an ingredient which is sometimes used to bond dye colours to fabrics. Take for example a 2007 report from the medical journal Dermatitis which outlined a situation where a paediatrician suffered a severe widespread case of dermatitis from being in contact with formaldehyde textile resins from her hospital scrubs and mask. Now although before and since then many countries have identified it as a known carcinogen and lowered the maximum concentration allowed in all products, not just garments, the parting message from the co-authors still rings true. They said, Despite a trend for reduction in the concentration of free formaldehyde in textiles, formaldehyde textile resin allergic contact dermatitis remains an important clinical issue and likely underdiagnosed, which could also be due to patch testing of the fabric, often leading to false negative results. In 2006, the US military banned the use of synthetic clothing for soldiers off base stationed in Iraq. For clothing that is lauded for its ability to keep wearers cool, it has a worryingly low melting point, which led to more than a few burns for people stationed in warmer climates. One report in particular revealed a patient admitted to a hospital as a result of the armored vehicle he was in being struck by an improvised bomb, leading to 70% of his body suffering severe burns. However, the severity of his injuries was sharply increased by the polyester shirt he was wearing, which melted into his skin which also exposed him to toxic risk from the chemicals being released from his clothes. And there are many other stories just like that, so much so that around the same time the military had rolled out a similar ban for personnel in aviation, fuel tank transport and other areas which had potential of being exposed to high heat. However, outside of the military, how much attention is this given for other industries which come into contact with high heat on a regular basis. As you can expect, even since then, the answer to that question is not much. Even beyond that, the attention to chemical-laden garments in general is still pretty lackadaisical, as we've seen various airlines in the last decade have been sued by in-flight staff over problems with their uniforms leading to illness and injury. Although it can feel like there is no way to escape chemical clothing, I should say not all industrial chemicals are extremely bad, and there are some which have been made and proven to be non-toxic. However, for the same reason it is advised babies play with non-toxic toys and wear non-chemical clothing, it can be applied to adults. That a large number of the chemicals used in manufacturing still pose a great risk and those seem to never leave the garments, as many tests show after numerous washes, the chemicals found will not essentially lower in quantity. So I'm sure there are many who would be happy to know there are many alternatives available. The easiest would be to wear nothing at all. But there are also a lot of natural fibers you can wear. These include cotton, flax, which is used to make linen, hemp, silk, wool, mohair, alpaca, cashmere and more. The key is to make sure if it is a plant product, it's grown organically. Also for all the aforementioned materials, that they come from a source free of toxic chemical products, which isn't always shown on the labels and at times even the labels are made with chemicals. However, researching into the brand should be able to tell you enough about what you need to know, as well as speaking to a dermatologist for further advice. Aside from that, most of you will also be happy to know that a lot is being done to reduce the presence of toxic chemicals in the fashion industry. From organic materials becoming more prevalent, to the known dangerous chemicals having their previous acceptable amounts used lessened by some governments. Even as an industry, there have been some collective efforts to reduce and effectively ban the uses of certain chemicals. Whether you look at groups like the Global Organic Textile Standard or the Level Working Group, who are both centered around reducing the environmental impact of materials. 
You also have the Zero Discharge of Hazardous Chemicals Foundation, or ZDHC for short. They have some of the largest retailers and manufacturers in fashion, partnered with a pledge to remove all hazardous chemicals from their supply chain by 2020, which hasn't been reached in totality. However, great efforts have been made and more will be done, which is promising. So, with all that said, and so much more which hasn't been, it's apparent we have an excessive chemical use issue in the textiles and fashion industry and our understanding of its impact on humans is only now scratching the surface, as we have yet to isolate and see the complete long-term effects. However, we know there are increased rates of cancers and other maladies that can partly be attributed to it. So, as more and more research is done in this space, we will update you. The follow-up documentary will be released sometime in 2021. In the meantime, you can visit the website howtoxicarmyclothes.com to find out more about everything mentioned in this documentary and an additional encyclopedia and suggested reading. For any additional questions, you will also be able to contact us through that site. However, for now, we bid you farewell. <laughs>